Hey there, just an FYI for this episode. We recorded with Andrew prior to the rebrand to the Restoration Group podcast, but this episode was so rich and much of Andrew's story aligns perfectly right, with our heart uh, to invest in leaders who want to integrate their Christian faith into their business that we wanted to share it even after the rebrand anyway. So I wanted to give you a heads up. So when you hear convos with Clay, or you see the old content or branding. That's why. Thank you for listening and enjoy this time with Andrew. Hello and welcome to the next episode of Convos with Clay. I am your host, Clay Steves, and I, you know what? I deeply believe that all development begins with self-awareness and the journey to that awareness happens best in conversation. First and foremost, in conversation with God, followed by conversations with others who are on the same journey. In this podcast, my listener is an invitation to you to join me on that journey. So welcome to the conversation. This week's guest, okay, so there was an AMA episode back in the day. It was AMA episode 68. So longtime listeners, you might know the episode. Um, if you want to go back and listen, you could go back now. But I, I kind of talk about this secret hidden guru because the episode the ama is about <laughs> the ama is about podcasting oh, no. and starting a podcast like somebody like he's oh come on clay um but so the question was posed about like starting a podcast and so i'm answering questions on the limited experience i have but i share the story of a friend who guided me on the front side of starting a podcast and that my dear listeners that mystery man from back in the day is today's guest, Mr. Andrew Schleck. Andrew is a podcast host and producer of the Athletic NBA Show, Down to Dunk, and other various NBA shows. Andrew lives in um, the promised land of Oklahoma City with his wife and his three sons. And my dear friend Andrew, welcome to the conversation. Man, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this for a while. I do a lot of podcasts every week, but getting the chance to to talk to you and to talk about uh, the way that God has shaped uh, my life and the life of my family is something that I really um, I cherish. So I'm excited for this. All right. Well, see, you went serious there, and I was going to go silly at the start. So I'm going to shit. You go can go. Silly. You can go. Take it whatever way you want. But I'm just. <laughs> I've been in a reflection mode this morning, I and it. I am like laser focused here. But you can, man, just take it wherever you want. I can. I can jump back and forth. Yeah, so so that's what we'll do. We'll get we'll get to the serious, but I just say we're not going to talk the NBA. We're not we're not going to yeah. go into any details, okay? But I just okay. and for listeners for your context, um, this episode's being recorded somewhere between the 2022 NBA draft and the start of the 2022-2023 season. So whenever yeah. it goes live, whenever you listen to it, just know our timestamp is between those two points. Um, also, this is not financial advice. If you choose to listen to anything we say, we, we have no backing. We are no professionals on saying any of this. Andrew, yeah. over <laughs> under, over under 26.5 wins for our thunder. I can't, maybe Ooh. I can say your thunder, but 26.5 yeah. wins for our thunder in the 2022-2023 NBA season. I'll go slightly over. Ooh. Slightly over. I think they're going to be better than they were last year, but they won't be good. So <laughs> they're in a weird limbo yeah, space, the, right? They're, they're in a, they're they like, are like, you could like try to make the jump, but it may not be the point to, tr to actually make the run yet. Yeah. Yeah. It almost be like the, the, the team is trying to make the jump and management is pushing their head back down. Once they like hit a certain <laughs> level, it's like, no, <laughs> go back down. Back down. Yeah. Next draft class. Next draft class. Right. Got to be in the lottery. Exactly. Yeah, it will be. Okay, exactly. so that's the that's the extent of my NBA knowledge, and so we're going to end there. <laughs> but you, um, man, so let's go into reflection mode, and, and maybe just take me back because you reference multiple podcasts that you that you just record a lot. And if I go back to when we first met, which would have been late 2019, early 2020, yep. so pre world, you know explosion of COVID and yeah. everything that has come since, man, you were recording a bananas amount of podcasts back then, even before you were doing it professionally, like yep. where, tell me the story of how you came to the medium and even the love of the medium of podcasting. Yeah. So it was 
fall of 2012, I had, we had, Amy and I just had our first son and I am looking for ways to get together with my friends at that point, because it's like, I'm going to lose contact with people because like being a parent is, it's like all consuming and it's, you know, trying to be like a good husband, a good parent. It's like, man, I need to figure out something else too. And so I hit up some of my friends and actually some guy, like some guys I'm like stayed connected to a few that I, you know, had just admired through the years and wanted to like start a Bible study. So we met at Jimmy's egg on Rockwell and Hefner. Yes. We meet at six o'clock in the morning and we would talk about the Bible for 15 minutes. And then we'd talk about the NBA for 45. Um, and so we did this for maybe like four or five weeks. And we're like, you know, a lot of people had talked to me like, Oh, you should start a, a, a thunder podcast. Or you should start an NBA podcast. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Uh, and we were just talking about it and we said, we should just record our conversation, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And like, okay. So that was kind of like the, the birth of my show down to dunk was at Jimmy's egg at 6 AM doing a Bible study. And we, our very first episode, I don't even think you can find it, which I'm thankful. <laughs> <laughs> um, we recorded, we were sat with a mic. We we're all sitting around one USB mic, a blue snowball. And we had no clue what we were doing and we published it and it was terrible. Um, but that, that's how we got started. And I loved it. I loved the process. I loved the creativity. We created a lot of segments, you know, we would get together every Friday for the, the last this will be our 11th Thunder season, I think. Wow. You know, for 11 seasons now, like we've gotten together every single Friday at 6 a.m. and recorded a show, an hour long show together. And so the creative process, you know, getting to spend time with people just uh, honestly like laughing is like such a big <laughs> deal to us. Like just like mm -hmm. making like just time to just laugh with each other and just be stupid and just have fun um, has been like, has been really, really good. And then, from there, I, you know, our show is doing pretty well. I decided to add two, we would do like random interviews with people. If I could get a hold of some media member that knew a lot more than I did, I'd try to interview them, bring them on the show. And then I just thought, what if we did that? You know, what if we did three shows a week? And so I started to do that. Um, at the time I was working at, um, a nonprofit called white fields. And so I was the education coordinator for them. It was a, it's a group home or it was a group home for abused and neglected boys that had kind of fallen through the cracks of the foster system. And so, um, I'd record before on Fridays before work. And then I would record on my lunch break Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'd have shows. And so, um, but yeah, I never envisioned myself being able to do it full time. I just thought it was really fun. It was a way to stay connected to the NBA and to, uh, connect more with, you know, media members that I admired and followed. And, you know, it just eventually just started to snowball a little bit. And, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it all started. Just honestly having no clue what we were doing. I love those stories though, because I feel like that's the, <laughs> often the Genesis, right? We, we look for the yeah. perfect strategy or the perfect plan and, and try to be so intentional. And sometimes it's just about starting and then putting in the work, like just sticking to it because yeah. active listening that whole time that you started that down to dunk, right? Your kind of original, mm -hmm. um, podcast, you were working other jobs. So, I mean, this, while it is now your yeah. profession, right? Just listening. I mean, that was in yeah. the fringes, as you said, like that Friday, 6 AM, and then you expand, you're doing all of this while trying to lead your wife while trying to grow because you were growing your family through that season too right from because 2012 yeah. 2012 isn't your oldest or is that your oldest yeah uh, yeah that's my oldest but okay so that's the start Archie the came on two thing. years later and like yeah right. yeah yeah and so you're only increasing yeah. again your responsibility and you've got a job in a um high mission high I mean there is high emotion in that space that you were doing yeah. right in the calling you were yeah, there definitely and now you're adding and now you're adding a passion, something you're doing, like, how did you just go back to that season, man? Talk to me about the, okay. What do I want to ask in that space? 
that's an extraordinary amount of grit and drive. And you might not like me even saying that, but it, it is for somebody to do all of that that I just described. Was that overly burdensome for you? Was it natural for you to like begin to kind of add that more and more? Talk to me about your journey, even with what I'm going to call pursuing and prioritizing your wife, growing your family, having a full-time job that I'm going to say has high emotion, high ministry aspect, and now adding a growing passion. Man, just talk to me about them, that experience for you and balancing the tensions of all of that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't easy, but they all are so different. You know, I felt like I could, I could give to the kids at Whitefields when I was there. Yeah. Um, and then going home, I mean, I'm still learning how to be a dad. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning how to be a dad. Um, Amen. but you know, <laughs> uh, it, <Amen>. uh, <laughs> and I loved talking about the NBA though. It never really felt like a grind. It always felt just, it was always exciting to me. And I'm I'm pretty competitive when it comes to this stuff. And so whenever I would see like other podcasts starting and like, oh, they're doing a video portion. Oh, well, how do I do that? And so I'm like trying to figure out how do I do that? And so I, I saw it like almost competitive. Like I wanna be, I don't wanna just have a Thunder podcast. I wanna have the best Thunder podcast. And I wanna find a way to make that happen. Um, was best uh, size or quality for you in that season? In other words, was it like the number of people listening or was it like your measurement of quality? Yes. Yeah, both. <laughs> I needed okay. it all. I got you. Yeah, I got I, you. All right. I all would, right. yeah. I remember coming home one day and telling Amy like, oh, we hit this certain threshold of listeners and like, this is really exciting. And she's like, that's great. How do you make money doing it? You know? <laughs> 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 and I look at her and I say, I have no idea, um, <laughs> but let me figure that out. And um, oh. so we we actually started doing live events summer of 2016. Okay. And that was really fun and eye-opening to what we could do for a community of people, which I had never really thought about until then. Like, I just thought like... I'm producing the NBA content that I would have wanted, you know, Here. because it wasn't there. And so it's like, okay, this is what I would want in a, in a show. And so let me make, let me just go ahead and make it. And then see, I, hopefully other people would like it too. And that summer, and it was, it's funny cause it was the summer that Kevin Durant left. Um, it's quite a but summer we did our first live. Of, I was going to say, if you're an NBA podcast, oh that's quite a summer in Oklahoma oh, city. Man. We were, and we were planning it before free agency had even started. And then like Kevin leaves, we're like, we had thought like, okay, if Kevin stays, it's going to be like a celebration. If not, boy, it's going to be like a roast. It's going to be, <laughs> it could be pretty vicious. Uh -huh. And um, like people drove in from Tulsa, people, and we had a couple hundred people come to this event. We're like, oh, well, this is kind of interesting. Um, and since then, we've had a lot of different events and we've had a crew from Tulsa that they didn't know each other prior, but they will ride down to like down to dunk events together. They've developed like friendship. I'm like, holy smokes. Like, hmm. so back in college, Amy and I were just kind of, we were dating and we're kind of dreaming. Like, what are we, like, what are we going to, like, what are we going to do with our life? You know? And I would tell her like, I love the NBA and I want to help people like, but that job doesn't exist. That's like not a thing. So how does that like they're probably two separate jobs, you know? And I had almost like resided to the fact that like maybe like white fields and doing the podcast is that dream come alive. Mm -hmm. But God has like shown me that like, no, like I can do both in one mm -hmm. and um, bringing a community of people together. Something that's become really important for me within the show that people can feel involved, that people, um, you know, can know us personally and get, get to know others, um, that have like similar interests and similar passions. Um, and then we found like, and we, we had our thousandth episode last summer Wow! and That's I a, got a thousand yeah, episodes, a thousand. Yeah. We had our 1000th episode last summer and I got, I just was like, Hey, if you have something you want to share about the show or something that has meant anything to you, you know, what we've done, or if you have a funny memory or whatever, like just shoot me an email. And man, 
I got these emails from these people. I was, I was honestly sitting at my computer, just crying and just thanking God mm -hmm. that he had given this to me because I think of this one kid who sent me an email and he said that he and his grandma would listen to the episodes like separately, but then they would call each other and talk about it. And it was like a way for them to connect. And he, his grandma died last year. Mm -hmm. And now when he listens, he just like still can feel that connection with mm -hmm. her. And I'm just like, boy, like that was just, that, that was just like a moment. Just like, wow. Um, there was another, a local guy that had, uh, cancer and he would sit and listen to our episodes when he's getting his chemo treatments and, you know, sent me a letter. Um, I had a guy tell me that when he listened to our episodes, like our dumbest, craziest episodes, he would feel like he had friends and had contemplated like ending his life, but he would mm -hmm. just, he would loop our episodes in his apartment. And I was just, I, my mind was just completely blown that God could use mm -hmm. something like just friends sitting around a microphone, just we're talking about the thunder. We talk about fast food, breakfast cereal, like whatever. Like we're just talking, you know. Um, You're just being friends. And that God, yes, and that God can use mm -hmm. that um, to help somebody. Um, he was just like, look, I just feel like he's just, you know, like, yeah, I can do anything. Even as silly as what you had said when you were in college talking to Amy, like as silly as that may have seemed, yeah. like I can do it and I can do more. And it was just, um, it's been very humbling and eye opening that like, man, cause I, I don't know, like, I feel so blessed. I don't, I didn't, you know, I don't feel like I did any of this. I feel like God, like just like paved this way and I'm just kind of floating through it, you know? Yeah. One, thanks for sharing those stories and how cool that they shared those with you. Like just what a gift for yeah. you that they were, they were willing to to ship those to you and let you be mm -hmm. a part of their, because you were already a part of their story with the work you had been doing. I think, um, as you're talking about it, it just reminds me of, and one of my mentors always points me back to Ephesians 3.20, that, you know, um, that God stands ready to do more than ever think, dream, or imagine. And there's just this, <clears throat> yeah. so then it begs the question of like, well, <laughs> if he stands ready, why doesn't he? And so there's just, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't think there's a single answer to what is the thing you have to do, right. To unleash it. But there is a, an obedience piece and obedience for you, for me, for you listener is, is different for everyone. And I think what God, and it's going to be different in different seasons that God's calling you to, it's going to be in alignment with who he is, yeah. but like, and so you were being obedient. And so, yeah, God, God has done more than you've thought, dreamed or imagined. And he likely will, yeah. not likely will, he will again, if we continue yeah. to be obedient to take those steps. So, so let's go back to we're going to get to February of 2020. We're going to get to February of 2020 because yeah. Andrew and I have a fun colliding story there. We'll we get do. to we'll get to dinner at Cheevers. We'll get to dinner at Cheevers soon right. enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, we can laugh while we're in the middle of it. Man, yeah. um, that that season before that. So you're working. You're working at Whitefields. You're working other jobs. Mm -hmm. The podcast mm -hmm. passion is there. Clearly. You're, I won't say the podcasting piece, but to be able to have you talking about the NBA, this joy, this passion you have was there at the very beginning. Cause if you and Amy are processing that way back in the day, yeah. what was the, and you made the joke earlier about Amy going like, great, glad you, glad you crossed X threshold. <laughs> when does that pay the electric bill? When does that fix right. the air conditioner? <laughs> Maybe that's a relevant one today. When does yeah, that exactly. fix the AC, yeah. right? So For real. Okay. In that season, were there times that that you tried to make that like the economic driver for the Schlecht household? Were there times like I, I guess process for me the the oscillation? And I'll use the word attention again for you of like I've got this job, but I have this passion. And in the end, you, you now have aligned them. But previously, you were doing two different things. Were there times that you mm -hmm. felt you rushed that process? towards trying to, let's say monetize, like monetize your passion? Yeah. So we had gotten a bunch of local advertisers, um, 
the mule was an adver advertiser for us for a while. Nice. Uh, Andy's frozen custard was one for us. That was like, that was a big one for me because the they sent us these little cards that gave us free Andy's and I was like, this is dangerous. This is I was about to say there's a food, um, there's a food and drink theme on your early sponsors here. I mean, I'm yeah, just, man. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. Tons of, so mostly restaurant based local sponsorships and okay. we would do like some live events with them as like a part of it. Yeah. Um, but then in 2017, I started a Patreon based show. And so if you don't, if you guys don't know what Patreon is, it's a, it's a website where you can take whatever kind of work that you normally do that you produce for free and you get people, you get subscribers to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, and so we, I started a podcast with. Um, now Thunder employee, Royce Young, uh, Fred Katz, who works at The Athletic with me now, and then my buddy, John Hamm, who is not the Mad Men actor, but a local guy here that knows the NBA salary cap really well. Um, and he does he's local radio stuff. And so we, we were going to start a show. We thought about how can we just make this a like a normal podcast that we just publish and try to see if we can cross a certain certain threshold of listeners and um i had thrown out the idea like listen if we get like a a portion of the listeners that we get on down to dunk we will make more money that way and so we started that in 2017 where we started a, a four dollar like four bucks you get four podcasts a month and uh i've been doing that since 2017 and it's done well. It hasn't done well enough for me to, it didn't do well enough for me to quit my job. Um, but it was like, oh, this is actually pretty great. And so that's kind of another thing that I've tacked on there to kind of push us a little bit closer to that. Mm -hmm. um, we had actually, so Amy and I, at the time, uh, I was working full time, but I was also refinishing furniture at night too, um, just to try to make it, you know. And so hmm. I could stop refinishing furniture once we started that, um, which was hmm. great. And we could free up our garage again. Um, but that show opened a door to, um, to the Thunder themselves. Because they were like, who is this guy that's doing a podcast with Royce? <laughs> What's his name? Huh? Who, who is will you, this? Yeah. <laughs> so will you get him in here? Like, we need to talk to him. Like what? Mm -hmm. how, and like, I remember meeting like, like, how did you swing this one? Is like what one of the PR guys said to me. You were <laughs> I was like, like well, I don't know, bro. Um, Royce is always really good to me throughout mm -hmm. the whole process. We were a part of his blog for a little while and he was always helpful to me. Um, so yeah, when we started that show, it was like when the door opened to like go into Thunder Games regularly with a press pass. And yeah. um, so that was a big, it was a big step that was like, oh, okay, like maybe this can happen. And even like Thunder PR before I got the job I have now, um, called me one day and they were just like, hey, I just want you to know, I think that you're going to make a career out of this. I'm like, I'm sure glad you think that, but I, I don't see it yet. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like when it's when really is nice that, of like, you to say that, like timestamp, timestamp that combo and like the beginning fall of to get... 29, fall of 2019. Okay. So we're right when there. Yeah. We had that conversation. So it was like on the cusp of it happening. So, so like markers and road signs are there. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, and again, like you, you know, you, you joke and have fun, like, great. I'm glad you can see it. It's still not in my bank yeah. account. It's still not paying for anything. Yeah. Like, great. Awesome. I'm glad I'm yeah. in the stadium. I'm glad a press pass again, you people that are around me, you're getting paid to do this. I'm here yeah. trying to get paid. Um, yep. not, not having to refurnish uh, furniture anymore. There's a whole nother podcast about like entrepreneurship and grit that I didn't oh, realize boy. we could even talk about. <laughs> so that'll be a different recording day. But so, yeah. so, but t late 2019, early 2020 is when we first met. And so mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll get full uh, listener awareness now that that was a time when you and I were in discussion about you coming to join one of our medical device companies, right? To yep. come work with us at Habakkuk. And that would have been, so again, in replacement of your... 
again, in the tensions, your traditional income, your eight to five mm -hmm. job, not that a medical device sales job is eight to five. Anybody listening, it's not eight to five, right. but, um, you know, kind of that traditional revenue stream, uh, to help support your family. And we, so back then listener at Habakkuk, we were at a scale and a size where, uh, Kirsten and I actually still did the final interview with every potential candidate. Um, and so yep. we would go to dinner and that's, and we would go to dinner with a candidate spouse. And we actually still do that in our process. We do it a little earlier actually now. Um, and our awesome, uh, leaders of culture do that, um, for us. But so Amy, Kirsten, uh, Schlecht and I all go to dinner and I mean, it was, and I think you'd back this up if I'm wrong here, tell me. <laughs> It was like, it was fantastic synergy. It was great. I think everybody yeah, enjoyed was. the fellowship, the connection, um, the passion, the purpose, the, the focusing on what God has for us, providing for you know, all these uh, elements of alignment to where mm -hmm. we are at a place like Andrew, come join us. Heck yeah, dude. Like, well, yeah. You, okay. You don't have experience in this. We don't care. Like you've got a grit, mm -hmm. you're a quality uh, person, you genuinely are pursuing following God and your spouse and being the father, you know, all these elements, like we can figure the other stuff out. Mm -hmm. And so take me, so we offer a job. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if we sent it that night. We normally wait till the next morning, but I think I was so done or I had had a couple glasses of bourbon. Both those things can also be yeah. combined together <laughs> into, <laughs> into a Thursday evening achievers. But so we make you a job offer now take your side of the story up to that point and then um and i'd love to yeah well we'll we'll get on the back side of the story in a moment but take take the story from yeah. there from your side of the table yeah so i'm gonna backtrack a little bit because white fields closed oh that's right in the that's right spring of 2018 and it gets yeah. shut down due to funding issues and so now i'm like okay now what, you know, I don't really know what I want to do, what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got a little bit of time to figure it out. Um, I worked at Epic Charter Schools for a minute. It was a terrible fit. I didn't enjoy it. Um, I didn't know that part of the story. You had some other teaching background prior to that, right? Didn't you teach at public school yeah, for a bit? I did. I taught okay. at Midwest City High School, like right out of college. Okay. Okay. Um, so I taught there, I ended up getting my master's and then worked at Whitefields for, for a while. Okay. Um, so didn't really enjoy the job with, uh, with Epic. And so I left and then I ended up taking a job with one of my buddies who had a medical device company and it was a, an Epic disaster. We had an, we had Epic charter schools and we had Epic disaster followed. And Epic, um, and Epic charter and, schools are all over the news for their Epic disaster right now. So right. The theme. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, we are in a place and like kind of like a, a rough financial place, like mm. career wise, I feel like I'm an absolute mess mm. and we are just on our knees praying on a daily basis that God would do something. And we ran across your company's page on Facebook. I think Amy came across it. She was like, you gotta, you gotta check this out. I remember I was, I was, she sent it to me while I was sitting, fixing our washing machine. Our washing machine was messed up and I'm sitting there watching YouTube because YouTube is the only way I fix anything. Uh -huh. Um, and YouTube? I'm sitting there fixing the washing machine and I saw I stopped because I saw your website and then I like listened to your story that you had on your website. I was like, holy smokes, like this would be amazing. Um, and I remember applying and the interview process took, I don't know, five or six weeks mm -hmm. to get through maybe even a little bit longer. And I, we used to just walk up and down our street at night when we get to put the kids to bed, Amy and I would walk up and down the street, just, we'd be praying half the time. We would be just talking about what could be half the time, you know, it was just like one of those seasons of life where you're just waiting and you know that God has something mm. for you. And December of 2019, the athletic, the athletic is the company I work for now picks up down to dunk because they were trying to um, fill their network with a podcast for every team. And so we get a, a deal done with them to start January, 2020 was when they were to bring us on and we would be a part of their network. And then as we're having conversations, the head of audio is like, 
hey, we would we don't have a spot for you, but we would like to bring you on as a producer too if, if we do have a spot ever. I'm like, yeah, that would be very, very cool Great. if you would do that for me. <laughs> so let me know. Um, but meanwhile, we, you know, we find Habakkuk and I'm like, man, this would be a great way. And, you know, we, uh, we try to envision and we try to try to, you know, make our way, make our own plan with what we think God would do. Come on now. You know, it's like, what would God do? It's like, oh, like, it's just the dumbest game you can ever play. Um, but you know, God could use Habakkuk to like redeem this awful situation that we're in, you know, and that would make sense. Like we could connect it. Like it would be this nice little two puzzle pieces that fit together really well. And we were, man, we were dead set on joining your team and joining your family. And, you know, our kids go to school together and like, there's just like a, like so much like synergy. And like, I really enjoy getting to know you and getting to know a lot of people at your company. Um, And then I get, the, the offer for your position yeah. and the offer for the athletic in the same day. And it's like, and the athletics like, yeah, you can have the job if you want it. Just let, just let us know, you know, <laughs> here's what the starting point is. Here's if you want to negotiate, let us know, you know? And I had like, we had like built up to the, to the point where I like, we were like dead set on, on, you know, working with you. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was just a weird moment because God had like given me two, uh, honestly, two great paths to take. Yeah. And I felt so overwhelmed with gratitude mm. because my confidence was like shot at that mm. point. Like I have felt really down and out and really frustrated. Um, and um, God just was like, you know, I'm going to provide. And I had, I had a, a guy at my church that, call me. I remember exactly where I was in town. I'm driving and things are not going well. And he calls me and he said, you know what? God is going to give you more than you could ever ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll, I will, you know, I'll believe it when I see it, my man, you know? And he said, he will. You said, you just watch, you just wait. He's Mm going to do it. And through that, um, I think that if the, if I just was given the job with the athletic, that would have been great. And I think it would have been a confidence builder, but I think going through the process with the back, it gave me a, a sense of confidence mm-hmm. in myself, you know, that I didn't, that was beaten down. And I think God, as much as it felt just kind of strange and I felt even a little silly at times after I didn't take the job with you, I, um, I still felt the sense of like, God used those moments, mm-hmm. um, to help make you know to help build me back up in ways that i felt like i had been kind of beaten down so um like he didn't waste anything in that season you know yeah same day literally same Same day day. same day like it was unbelievable it's like man i i was begging for one job offer for so long i don't even care where it came from you know and then like two like great job offers i was like man like God is like, he's too good right now. Like this is, this is too good. And I, you know, spent a lot of time in prayer because it, it was, it, it was not an easy decision for me to make either. Yeah. Um, and I ended up choosing the athletic and God has like really been so good even through all of this, you know, it's yeah. just been honestly unbelievable. And on the backside, it's been fun because I think the listeners can tell, like you and I still have a great relationship. Like, you know what I mean? And it wasn't, um, and I think the, those type of scenarios, they do carry risk to them. Meaning like that type of scenario could have gone the other way where it was like, oh, come on, dude. Like we just went a whole process and I'm, I'm on my side now of that. Right. But I think that's the risk point of it. And it's like, man, we walked this, but. If I can remember back to the phone conversation, because you called me personally to, to decline mm-hmm. it, um, mm-hmm. there was one, I could sense the sincerity in the, like the struggle, um, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. the difficulty of the decision, which meant like, it wasn't like, oh yeah, like, whoo, this would have been like nice and easy and it would have paid some bills, but I, now I'm gonna go do the thing I've always wanted. So like, see ya. No, right. it wasn't that. Right. It was it was a sincere like, no, 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 no. I was moving multiple things forward, trying to pursue God to provide, to follow him above everything and then provide for my family in this. And there was a, again, a struggle there. I could sense that. And then too, you just did it with class. And so I just think there's needing, you just called me and we're like, listen, I'm just gonna be straight up. You know, this is, this has been what I've been doing. And this is the pivot point where I finally got the opportunity to like fully do it. And mm -hmm. I remember that those, maybe those two strains making it be like, man, I say, I want people to do what they feel called to do. Like then I got to be able to be like, yeah, then do that. Like make yeah. that choice, like make, <laughs> make that choice. Yeah. And like, I need to, I need to cheer you on. I got to process what to do, but like, I need to cheer you on in this. If I'm going to be who I say, and I think we all kind of, kind of like, if you're going to be who you say you're going to be like, this is the choice you got to make in that scenario. And I think that's, uh, yeah. as I look back and reflect, I think that's a unique story that not many people get to connect on. Well, I mean, two, yeah. two plus years later and go, I know, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it's, it's only these type of moments that you like, you can just feel God's hand, like just mm -hmm. weaving these scenarios, like in and around each other that I, I mean, it's, it's just, it was definitely not me, you know? It was definitely not me orchestrating yeah. things, you know, it was like, God was like orchestrating all of this for like his purpose. And it's just, it's overwhelming for me to think about it. Honestly, like yeah. it really was just, I feel just so much gratitude um, yeah. in so many ways. Cause I mean, if I didn't go through the interview process, like we probably see each other at the school and be like, Hey, what's up, man? Or whatever, you know, but like, Correct. we don't really know each other, you yeah. know, Yeah. like God had purpose in that. Yeah. And now our kids are in the same house. Our school has a house system. Yes. Like Gryffindor yeah. and Slytherin and all of that. We don't have those houses, but a house system like that. And like yeah. our kids are in the same house together. And every year we get to rinse and repeat. Yep. And, uh, that's been, it's been rich. Okay. So you're two, two years into what before was just a passion. I'm, I don't know what to do with the word hobby in the English language, but I'll, I'll just say it was a passion that you did on the <laughs> side. It was definitely a hobby. Bill. Okay, okay, yeah, hobby. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's, it's a hobby. Call it a hobby. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's a, it was a hobby. It was a hobby. Call right? it like it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're two years into where your former hobby became your career and the thing that you get to do yeah. day in, night in, day out, night out. <clears throat> what do you, what would you counsel someone who's in the previous season? So if there's a listener right now, they are following God. They, they have a passion for something that's outside of their job and um, meaning their day-to-day -day job. It's a hobby, but yet they would like to turn it into their career. Mm -hmm. How would you counsel them? Yeah, I would say if it's a podcast or a blog or whatever, if you want to make content, like you just have to get started. Like, and the thing is, don't worry about what your first one sounds like, looks like, whatever. It's going to be terrible. So just know that. <laughs> um, and that's okay. You know, it's okay to cringe at what you like did at the beginning of whatever, because you're going to learn. And so I'd also encourage you to go and connect with people that are doing it, you know, full time. And say like, how are you doing this? And like, what does this look like? And can you help me with, with this problem? Or I have no idea how this works. Like, d don't be afraid to ask questions. Like ask questions to people that, that know what they're doing that have been there, I think is crucial and stay consistent. If you're going to start a blog or if you're going to start a video or whatever you want to do with content, if you're going to drop it on Monday every week, make sure you do it every single Monday. And if you're not going to do it on that Monday, you better make sure that other people, that the people know that it's not going to be there and that it'll be there the next week or that it'll be there on Wednesday. Uh, be consistent because that's how you're going to actually build an audience. It's like people like build their, your content into their rhythm of life. Um, that's why like right now with down to dunk, which is my thunder show, we still do three days a week year round. It's like, we're going to be in the rhythm of your life and we're going to, we do it on YouTube and then we publish it, uh, afterwards to 
whatever podcast catcher you got. And so try to, if you're going to do content, you have to build yourself into the rhythm of people's lives. And if they don't know when it's coming, or if you're like, I'll just do it when I can get to it, like commit to it, find time to do it. If you're mm -hmm. a parent and you work nine to five or eight to five or whatever, wake up early or do it late. Like you have to find pockets to do it, but you have to stay consistent because that's when people will start under, you know, understanding what you're doing and will want to be a part of it. Uh, so that's what we found that has been really helpful for us is like just having a rhythm and, you know, staying consistent. And then also if you're a writer, read your own stuff. If you're a podcaster, listen to your own stuff, be willing to call out. If, if you're saying the word like every five seconds, take a sticky note and write the word like on it and slap it on your keyboard and, you know, remind yourself not to say that so much, you know, give yourself just like simple reminders of how to get better. Uh, so you, you don't get better unless you're listening to your own stuff or reading your own stuff and then contrast it with wherever you want to be, you know, and just try to keep tweaking and honing your craft. You know, you're never going to be perfect. You're never going to quote unquote get there, but you just have to just be willing to, to be bad and understand what you need to do to get better. You know, it's like, it's a big one. I was not good at hosting a podcast when I first started. And there are a lot of things I had to figure out and listening to myself was one of the hardest parts of it is I don't want to hear that. <laughs> is that what terrible. I sound it's like, oh, like? but if it's, yeah. I it's say like, that all the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you just, you have to get used to it and you have mm. to, you know, be willing to process all of it together. And if somebody's giving you negative feedback, you have to figure out if it's goes in the trash can or if you should actually face it, mm. you know, sometimes people th throw stuff at me all the time that I just need to throw in the trash can and not worry about. Um, but then there are definitely things where if somebody like spoke to me about audio quality or about a certain topic that maybe we were unfair about, you know, got to look at it, face it. If they're right, fix it, you know, and let them know like, Hey, you know what? I really appreciate you pointing this out. I'm going to try to be better next time or whatever. Um, so just facing those things and not, taking things so personally, you know, is a, is a definitely like a, as a content creator, you've got to face all of it and call it what it is and then do what you can to get better. Yeah. I don't want to rabbit trail down it too long, but how do you give me your real quick, how you discern what goes in the trash and how you, what you choose to actually listen to and apply? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's people that will just flat out disagree with things that I know are true. <laughs> Not those in the trash will pass. That's pretty simple. You know? Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of things that I can't say on my podcast that I know, mm. but I can kind of dance around them a little bit. And so people will, if they are throwing stuff at that, I'm like, you know, I wish I could tell you more. I can't tell you more, you know? So yeah. throwing this in the trash can. Yeah. Um, but there are definitely, and there are people that know a lot more about like audio quality, podcasting and stuff like that than I do that listen to my show. And they'll like hit me up and be like, hey, have you thought about this? Or have you thought about using whatever program for this? I'm like, honestly, never thought about it because I didn't know it existed. So thank you for pointing that out, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that I've wanted to do is kind of create a community of people and that I want to be a part of too. And, you know, we've used the draft as a part of that, where we have a big and be a draft party. We have a big lottery party. And, um, so yeah, I, I think also engaging with people on that level, like we're all human, we're all making mistakes. We all mostly don't know what we're doing, so it's okay. Like you have to be able to take criticism, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just start, be consistent, watch game film. Those are the, those yeah. are the like, and this is get a synergy account. See, see yeah. this is my, this is my game film. I like every episode, a guest would say something great. And I'd be like, that's incredible. And like, I'd go back and listen yeah. to the game film. I'm like seven episodes in yeah. a row. I said, that's incredible. So then I had to make a synonym. <laughs> I had to make a synonym chart for myself. And I'd be like, that's pause, read my card, go through a list. 
<laughs> exceptional. You know, whatever the next. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I love it. And so yeah, yes. I, I get it, man. Yes. I'm, that's um, I I can empathize with that one. Uh, be consistent. Yeah. Just start. What about the transition? And then I'm going to make this my final question. Anything you want to talk about? What about the tension of trying to make that side thing your career? How would you counsel someone when they're in that? I'm going to call it the liminal space where you're, you've started a Patreon account, you know, and that's just an example, whatever yeah. it is, they're trying to find a way to make um, writing, whatever it is, that's their thing. They want it to mm -hmm. be like their desire, the outcome you've got, frankly, where you get to do the thing you're passionate about and you get paid to do it. Yep. Talk to, talk to the person, just give them one piece of counsel. There's no silver bullet. Let's also acknowledge that, but just give them one piece of counsel as yeah. they're trying to make. So they're already doing all these things. They are, they have started, mm -hmm. they are consistent. They are watching game film. They are improving their craft. Give them one piece of counsel in that in-between space. For me, it's just been the, the people that I know within the space and knowing that they want to help pull me up, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't. Man, That's good. It's so hard because I, I can't claim to have really done any of this on my own. That's you know, good, it's been, it's been people that have, you know, t I had a lot of friends that worked at the athletic and a lot of them worked in Oklahoma city and then got jobs elsewhere. And so I just stayed connected. It was just, and just let them know, like, it's okay to let people know what you want and what you need. And, you know, I was constantly telling them like, Hey, listen, if you would, talk to so-and-so about this job that would be really helpful yeah. and they did and like my name just kept bubbling up just because i was you know being the squeaky wheel you know to these people at the athletic and um and i just really believe i can just look back and just see how god paved the path um it's hard because i just i my path is is so weird and it's just like such a um I just believe that like, God forged this path for me and that God has been so good to me and my family through all of the ups and downs and the struggles and, um, and then the people that he placed into my life. Like I can just, I can see it clearly now as I look back, it's like, man, just allow others, like people are going to love you. People are going to, you know, want to help you. And so you just, it's okay to rely on that. Like you can't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps every single time. You know, that's not, that's not, I don't think that's real. Honestly, I don't think that, that that's the real deal. Mm. I think that, you know, relying on people, relying on God are, you know, it's, it's how I got to where I'm at along with like staying consistent and, you know, being creative and using, you know, whatever I had, you know, as far as resources, but, yeah, when it came down to like making it a full-time career, it was the relationships that I had forged with the people that are already at the athletic and yeah. just being willing to just say, no, this is really what I want. Yeah. Um, is kind of how I got there, which may be a really terrible answer. I don't know, but I just know that like, that's what God did for me. Yeah. But you, there's been a theme of, of community. You even talked about that early on and desiring it and even how your podcasts yeah. created it. And then honestly, in the answer you just gave there, that's, I mean, that's a part of what I hear you articulating is that that community that you yeah. had and people who were, I'm going to say ahead of you, maybe not age wise, but like on that career of what right. you desired to do, you fostered intentionally. And I think even with integrity and balance, you can do that. You can intentionally foster community with people who are in the space you want to get to. I don't think, especially yep. if you're upfront with them, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, absolutely. I want to learn from you. I want to be around you. And when the opportunities of those conversations are happening, I want you to be remembering me. I just think, I, yep. I think that's, you can do that still with integrity. Um, I think if you were yeah. hiding something and like building a friendship off of it without actually talking about the things, right. but if you're building legitimate community, right. that's what I heard you saying. That's, um, that's good. Thanks for that, man. Yeah. Schlecht, yeah. man, good stuff. Any final thoughts or topics or questions that you want to process through um, before we wrap up today? Man, I don't think so. I just, um, I just am thankful, you know, yeah. getting to reflect on the story with you specifically is um, it just 
like it just fills my heart up. It just makes me feel so thankful, you know, uh, just that um, God would use just, I don't know, just this weird story about a little podcast guy to, you know, to just bring light. And it's just like, wow, like, I just don't, you know, I, I just look forward to what else God is going to do, yeah. you know, in our lifetime and what that looks like just because he's already done so much and man, I'm just, I'm just thankful. That's just kind of where I sit right here, even in the 84 degree house that I'm in right now, as I wait for my AC guy to get here. There's been a lot um, of appliance dialogue for you and I through our conversation. There was man. the, you were fixing the washer. We've had the AC. Like, yep. I'm just like, there's a, I don't know what that this means. This is a heavy dad pod, man. This is, this is how it goes. <laughs> Heavy dad pod. That's exactly right. Well, hey, if it's heavy dads trying to follow God, I'm good with it, man. I'm good with it. <laughs> hey, uh, brother, thank you. Thanks for uh, sharing your time with me and our listeners. I'm confident um, the same way that uh, he used your obedience previously and in ways that you could never think, dream, or imagine. He'll use this in some way that you and I can't think, dream, or imagine. And that's what's fun about trying yeah. to be obedient and stay in it. And, and it's just fun about what's following him um, is that yeah. it's about him. So, yeah, thanks again for, for sharing yeah. today. Yeah, thanks, Clay. Absolutely. And don't forget, man, keep this conversation going. Thanks for tuning into our show. If you want to learn more about how you can integrate your faith into your business, download our integrated business guide for free by clicking the link in the show notes below. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.